I'm working on this cover for Galaxy of Madness. Uh, camera, I have it lengthwise because, um, well, the orientation of the page. I think it just works better that way. So sorry if it looks a little funky on the screen. Also, being tilted, there'll be like a slight change in the proportions here. But <clears throat> I think you guys figured that stuff out. So um, I drew this first as a sketch. Do I have it? I think I have it here. Uh, I did several sketches of this. Um, This is one of the earlier ones. And then there was this one. Um, and actually the one that I did for this, I don't have in this sketchbook. I, I had done it months ago, maybe like a year ago even. Um, anyway, I took that sketch, brought it into Photoshop or Clip Studio. I use Photoshop as a short shorthand. Uh, brought it into Clip Studio and um, just tightened up the faces uh, it looks inked here. It's really super loose and stuff, though. Um, and then print it out on this blue line. And from here, I'm going to go into inks. Um, I'm going to be primarily using... Uh, these are Karatuke brush pens. Um, they have a little cartridge in there, and I'll use a syringe to put my own ink into them. Um, and... Cheap old watercolor brushes here, nothing special. Uh, it's a Princeton art brush. Uh, brush. Um, I like a cheap watercolor brush. Um, if the line work gets too sharp, it looks artificial. It almost looks uh, uh, digital. Um, and the whole purpose of me working analog here with brushes to just give it give it some life so uh, so let's just get into it um, if you're seeing this video then the book which is called galaxy of madness will have been released already um, and i hope you're digging it so uh let's get into it first i'm just kind of testing out the brush here to see how how this feels. And I apologize if this gets out of frame sometimes because I simply need to be able to concentrate on the, the page. Every now and then I'll look up and just to see that I'm not too far out of out of camera shot, but I really have to think about, you know, um, the page here and not the camera work, which is why I, I don't do as many videos as I'd like to. Um, now, I didn't do any warm-ups or anything like that. I usually like to just get right into it. Thinking here about how the... Uh, Light source is coming loosely from above and slightly from the sides here, so you're going to get this what's called core shadowing um, right here in the center. This is a character Odysseus, whom I really love. I love all these characters. Really, that's what <clears throat> pulled me into the book. So Mags and I had we'd become friends because of a young animal, you know. Uh, and like a lot of people, like I just don't I don't get out to the conventions and stuff very much. So um, meeting a lot of the other creators on Young Animal was mostly online. Uh, young Animal was a line that we did at DC. I was doing Kate Carson. She was doing Eternity Girl. And like when our books come out, you know, you just want to support each other and stuff. We started talking and did a cover for one of her books, and um, yeah, we just started talking about stuff, um, and during the pandemic, we actually tried a couple of things. We were trying, like, a graphic novel we did some pages for, and trying to find a home for, and it didn't quite work out, 
might still have a, a life for her someplace else in the future. But, you know, he, you, you put your projects together and you try and find a home. And there's, sometimes it's just about timing. Um, and that was certainly the case with this. Um, when she first pitched it, it was really ambitious. And I was like, ah, just not sure because there's a lot of issues. Usually I only do things in, in four issues and that's it because you just don't know how they're going to do. Um, but with the pandemic coming along, we were like, well, rules are out the window. I'm like, let's, let's just do it figure out where to publish it later and we, we kind of settle on like we'll just do it digitally put it out digitally and stuff um, one thing led to another long story short what I'm saying is the characters that she wrote is what pulled me in because at first I was hesitant because of the length of it and stuff um, I was like it's just too much it's just too big it's too ambitious and then like I read the characters and the world and the concept and I was like gosh oh, shit this is good this is really good uh so her writing won me over, and I was like, all right, let's just jump in. And we did. Um, found ourselves a home eventually here at Mad Cave, um, which has been amazing. Um, really excited to see new companies like Mad Cave do well. You know, I've been around a long time, and um, I've seen a lot of companies come and go, make big splashes, disappear, Big splashes, and then years later, you don't even remember some of these companies were around until you see some sort of, like, retro YouTube special about it or something. You're like, oh, wow, I remember them and how much money they threw into comics and tried to make it work, and for one reason or another, it didn't. So when you see these companies that are that are coming around now and being successful, um, it makes you really happy and hopeful. Um, and Matt Cave... Um, they're just doing some really, really cool stuff. And they know how to sell books. They know how to reach a young audience, which is something that excites me because as I get older, I can see my stats, you know, <laughs> uh, for my social media and stuff and, and try as I might. Generally, my audience isn't getting any younger, uh, which is something I'm very interested in reaching out to a younger audience for various reasons. One is just... Um, selfish reasons of survivability you know <laughs> as i age so does my uh my audience um and you know you want to you want to try and stay relevant well being true to yourself and uh anyway mad cave's really tapped into a fresh audience and um i really appreciate that and it feels good to bring my uh old age experience my sort of whatever name I've developed over the years to Mad Cave and um, have Mad Cave also show my work to a, a newer, younger audience that normally might not see it. So yeah, I love these characters. Um, Odysseus, complicated character. Well, they're all complicated characters. They're all dimensional. I mean, that's this is what I love about Max's writing is Chandis line. Fuck. <laughs> this was supposed to be a straight line. That's why. Right here. Damn it. Oh. That's why we have digital touch-ups. Uh, anyway. <laughs> her characters are all dimensional. Um, I don't want to give too much away about what's going on in the book. Especially because I think this... You'll probably put this video out early-ish. Um, but the relationship between Odysseus and Vigil is just one of my favorites. It is basically a father-daughter kind of relationship. And Taki and I have talked about this a lot. You don't see a lot of father-daughter relationships in comics. Um, it's kind of why we did one of our books. Um, Synergy was a father-daughter story. So that was another thing that attracted me about what Mags wanted to do here. And it's complicated, like I said. Uh, 
Odysseus's look. So the vibe of the comic is is inspired by um, Silver Age comics. Uh, I can't say Odysseus looks particularly Silver Age outside of his costume, which has like antennas and fins and stuff like that. But um, it gave him a really distinctive look. I don't know where it came from. Um, there's a couple of, of places but not one place in particular. I also gave him this, like, you'll see as I as I get into it. My hands are a little shaky because uh, I think either had too much coffee or not enough. <laughs> That's the tough part of coffee. You can't ever tell. Is it too much mm-hmm. or not enough? Anyway, <clears throat> what I was uh, trying to say was... Um, Mustache, I don't know where that came from. Um, and then his eyes here, I'm not sure how well you can see on the, the blue line here that he's got this kind of like stripes going across. And like, well, I'm not sure if I ever really discussed it with Max. In my, my mind, I felt like Odysseus has some sort of vision problems. Either vision problems, like maybe he's blind or what we would call legally blind. I grew up in a, in a house that was legally blind. Um, so I think about this stuff a lot. Um, or he just has this, this, like I imagine like a filament that he puts across his face and it, and it helps him with whatever uh, impairment he might have. Or it just helps him in his travels and his job as, you know, a space captain. I don't know about this rendering here on his mustache. Usually I just have it as a solid black shape going right across. I don't know if I like this. I had a nice line here, but now I'm going to cover it up. It's one of the tough things with thinking. Sometimes you'll lay down like a really nice, some really nice line work. And then you have to cover it up. Um, cause like say here it's an exterior line, but then I've got his mustache happening behind it. So I'll cover up some lines that I like. There's always a temptation to do sort of like a white outline so you can show off that nice line, but that feels, um, it works on some people's work. It doesn't work on mine. It feels inorganic. The other thing with this uh, cheap brush, you'll see like it's bent on the end here. Um, instead of being frustrated by that bend, I work with it. Um, I always think about the tools that I'm, that I'm using as tools that I'm working with. I'm never trying to bend them towards my will, really. I think about what they are and how they can best be used to bring out the best kind of line work. So I'm always conscious of where that bend in the, the tip is so that I can use it to help me express lines. When I was really young, one of my big breakthroughs when I was inking was to learn to think about my <clears throat> brushes. I try to use my brushes like they're pens, and I try using my pens like they're brushes. And what that means is like I get an edge on this brush, the way I would think of a pen kind of can dig into the paper a little bit. Um, in my mind's eye, I'm feeling that as I'm inking. Um, and that just gives me a, like I know I before I was talking about using the tool as it is, um, but you kind of meet it halfway in between what you need it to do. Like you have to accept the tool for what it is and what it can do, but then you can kind of find ways to sort of just nudge it slightly. I don't know if that makes sense. Uh, 
uh, one of the few things I dislike about working um, analog is the fact that <clears throat> it takes a while, it takes a minute for the ink to dry. It's not a problem so much with the brush, but it's definitely an issue that I encounter with the, with the pen once I'm using the pen. Um, and that becomes a real point of frustration. Uh, but right here, and that's one of the reasons why I use this glove. Um, partially to keep lead off my hands, but also um, it, it cuts down on the smearing because I'm more likely to absorb the ink than I am to smear it completely as I would with, um, with just my bare hand. Uh, so now I gotta do his nose here. I gotta concentrate on this because it's his face and if I get his nose wrong, it sucks. That's right. So I'm not sure about this whole section in here. I don't know. Okay, I also figured out, like I drew, you can see here, I drew like his cheek and his eye bone stuff here in the straight line and I feel like it should come out more um, so I'm going to kind of break away from what I originally drew and you can kind of see some pencil sketch here Kind of an interesting tangent here, the way his cheek goes right into his mustache. Um, probably going to lose that because of the black behind it. Um, but sometimes the tangent can be your friend. You know, the way this just guides the eye to the exterior of his face. Um, I really like that a lot. Alrighty, so... Get into an eye here. This is also important. Don't want to fuck this up. I mean, I don't want to mess anything up on I'm making, you know, but especially on the face. Like the face. Faces are so important. There are some artists, I dare say, are so good at drawing faces. Just the perfect face. They kind of don't need to nail anything else. <laughs> it's not an insult, it's just they're that good at, at, a, at a face, you know. Um, in fact, there was something my buddy, uh, Dave Johnson, I consider both peer and a mentor. Um, I was like, Mike, get your faces right. That's the main thing, get your faces right. People relate to faces. And, uh, I've definitely been sloppy with my faces over the years. So I've been trying to work on that. Because he's right, it's the most relatable thing on a page. For anybody, no matter what kind of style you're into, um, or what kind of art you like, I think you can agree that the way somebody draws a face really brings you in or or turns you away. Happy with this so far. I think I'm gonna try and just stick with Odysseus's face because I don't know how long I'll, I'll record this. We don't want it to be too long. This is gonna be pretty long anyway, but you know. Probably separate these videos. And pardon my rambling, because I'm thinking at the same time I'm drawing, so it can be hard to complete a thought while I'm laying down a line. And I think I want to keep the space back here black, the, 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 the swirl, so I really have to think about the exterior of his hair if I wanted to touch this line. I think I'm going to leave it open. Um, and you'll see what I mean. 
I love this kind of crazy hair. One of my new favorite sort of designs is like part it in the middle and flopping over, not middle, <laughs> part on the side and flopping over. Um, and this works on kind of any character's hair. It always works really well. Hopefully it doesn't end up dating itself, you know, some sort of style thing, but like I've done it on several other characters and um, every time I'm like, wow, that, that really works. Uh, add some extra dimensionality or some bounce to the face or the head. All right. <clears throat> this is, this is uh, turning out okay. Adding some squigglies into Odysseus's hair here. He's got some gray in there too, because he's an older character, like moi. And typically when I'm working too, um, I've just got my headphones on, usually listening to music. I'm actually listening to music in my one ear right now as I talk to you guys. It's an electronic band called French 79. No lyrics, just nice bouncy electronic music, nothing too heavy. It's been a while since I drew these characters. It's really fun looking over uh, my old files. I say old because I drew the first issue of this, I think in well, 2020, whenever the pandemic was. Who can tell time anymore? Like it's kind of a joke, but not really. Like you just, I, I can't tell anymore, like time. I don't know if I'm going to keep this streak in this hair or not. So I'm not sure when this video is going to air, but I'll tell you right now, it is Halloween of All those lines were wrong. <laughs> I wanted to keep that nice and thin, and instead I, I ended up making it really thick. Oh well, I'll survive. Plus, I always do a little digital touch-ups afterwards. I kind of wanted to do the exterior line of his hair, but like I said, I don't know. because I'm probably gonna do this black back here. I might wanna open there. So one thing I could do is just do an exterior line here. 
Maybe that's the best call. It's easy enough to drop out. Well, for now, I'm going to do this. Shit. See, it's too close in there. I didn't want that. So I could just kind of leave. Oh, let me get rid of that. I can kind of leave this. That's a tough call. I don't know. All right, I'm going to stop thinking about it. Let's do his. What I'm going to do is mask last because I'll do that in uh, with a pen. I don't know how much of his body I should do just because... Um, I've got all this other action in front. But I gotta start somewhere. So I'm gonna just start here. Do as much of his body as I can. He's got these metal kind of Colossus-like arms. Not that his arms are metal. I just figured it, it is a sort of part of his protective space suit, if that makes any sense. Silver Age kind of stuff. Shit. A little tiny line there over the edge. I'm just going to leave it. Oh, no. I'll go ahead and... Yeah, there you go. I kind of fixed it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do a exterior line on his hair, and then I can drop it later in Clip Studio if I wanna get rid of it. And just have uh, an open line color thing. We shall see. Okay, here we go. I'm keeping this like a, a, a kind of a bouncy cartoon style. I mean, all my work is pretty cartoony, but some of it's more cartoony than others, you know. But this is definitely meant to have some bounce to it, like the lines and stuff. Sort of reminiscent to like when I was doing Dick Tracy. One of the things I loved about doing Dick Tracy was it helped me bring my artwork back to a cartoonier style. Because um, while my stuff's always been abstract and cartoony, if you look at Powers, like <clears throat> over the years, it got a little less of that rounded Bruce Tim. Pixar kind of feel, a little more angular, um, a little more stoic in a way. Um, and I wanted to bring it back to that, but I also didn't want to just go over my, my Bruce Tim influence too much. And, and I just really started thinking of finding ways to make my own sort of balance of cartoony. And, um, and I think I found it. And I think I found it with Dick Tracy. And uh, hopefully I'm just bringing more of that in with, with this. Characters like Galaxy Madness characters. One 
of the things that I love about working with a brush is that uh, it gives me a variation that these Karatuki brushes, which I absolutely love, um, don't. This will give you almost the exact same line, almost the exact same line every single time. Um, and I love that I can get something different out of these. Brushes. Sorry, I'm just thinking. Thinking is hard. Alrighty, I think. I think I'm good for now on this. It's half hour. I think it's a good length of video. Uh, I use my ink in these little tiny, uh, like watercolor holders and I do that just so that I can uh, cover them up and then still use the ink later because one of the things I noticed is I used to ink I used to take my brushes right out of um, uh, right out of the bottle but this gets all crusty and stuff after a while so um, it's a little easier to just wash those out like that so here we go here's uh, here's Odysseus's face anyway this is the beginning of it um, and then next we'll go into, I feel like I should do these guys up front. Um, these guys running along because <clears throat> it's going to be harder to ink everybody behind that. Starting in the background wasn't very smart. But I just needed an easy face and I didn't want to, <coughs> pardon me, <coughs> start with um, Vigil right, right up front there. And I was really looking forward to diving into Odysseus, so there you go. My brush here. Well, thanks for um, listening in. Check out the links below to follow my um, newsletter, uh, my website, which is pretty much the same thing as my newsletter. If you, you sign up at the very bottom, my my website, uh, you'll get updates and stuff. And that's the best way to keep in touch with me um, and my projects. So um, I hope you're checking out Galaxy of Madness. Um, and check out the other videos. This is the first. I'm guessing this will be about four videos altogether. And uh, that's that. Thank you very much.